فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I wanted to inshallah ta'ala talk about the issue of responding, refuting the people of misguidance and the people of innovation. What position does it hold in our religion? Is it permissible? Is it something that you can do? And what ruling does it take in our religion? Is it wajib? Is it mustahab? Is it mubah? Is it makruh? Is it haram? And what's the evidence? Because issues like this when they come, if they are not dealt with it, or it's not dealt with in line of the sharia, ah, if it's not looked at through the lens of the kitab and the sunnah, then you will find people will fall into confusion. And either ifrat or tafrit. Either people will go extreme on doing and, and criticizing and refuting, or they will go short in doing so. And when I say going extreme in refuting, I mean without observing knowledge, without observing justice in the refutation, and without also having no mercy in the refutation. Because any refutation that doesn't have ilm, knowledge, and adil, justice, and it doesn't also have rahma in it, is a revel it's a refutation that really is incorrect. And it goes against the refutation of the ulama and the people of the sunnah. Some people thought, because there are some refutations that are not, that are not based on knowledge, that are not based on justice, that are also not based on mercy. So when they saw that, they thought refutation is wrong in and within itself. But what they didn't understand is that there's nothing wrong with refutation. Through refutation, the religion is protected. But it's a refutation that is not based on knowledge. It is the refutation that is not based on justice. And it's also the refutation that doesn't involve any mercy towards the opponent or the other individual who's being refuted. My goal, inshallah ta'ala, is to bring evidences from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the aqwal of the ulama, what they had said about this issue, refuting the innovators. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, this hadith, Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, he narrated in his sunan, Ibn Majah, Al-Hakim al-Nisaburi in his kitab al-Mustadrak, Al-Imam Al-Tayalisi rahimahullah, Imam Ahmed, on the authority of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَا يَمْنَعَنَّ رَجُّلًا هَيْبَةَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يَقُولَ بِحَقٍ إِذَا عَلِمَهُ أَوْ شَهِدَهُ أَوْ سَمِعَهُ The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that, a person, it should not prevent him the fear of the people. Because another riwayah says, مخافت الناس, the fear of the people. He's scared of the people. The fear that you have for the people should not prevent you from أن يقول بحق to say the truth. إذا علمه when you know it. أو شهده or you witness it. Oh, Samiahu, or you hear it. And another riwaya says, or if you see it. So whenever you, see, you have knowledge of a matter and you know it, or you witness a matter, or you hear a matter, knowing it should now, the fear of the people should not prevent you from it. The fear of the people should not prevent you from saying it. Don't be one who's scared. 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He took a covenant with those who know. لَتُبَيِّنُنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَ You will convey it to the people and that you will not conceal it. So if you know a matter, don't withhold it because you're scared that the people are going to run away from you. Or that the people are not going to be pleased with you. And a lot of the times, a lot of the times you find a group of people know there is an innovation in a person. Or they know that the so-and-so is misguided. Instead of ex telling the general mass of this individual and warning the general mass of this individual, they don't do that. Why don't they do that? Makhafat al nas because they're scared of the people. Amahaybat al nas they are honoring and reverend, putting the, uh, the, the people high up above the haqq. So he doesn't say, he becomes quiet and silent about it. Now that, that is the first hadith I open with. Al-Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, Imam Abu Zakariya al-Nawawi, who many of us know how noble and how high he is as a great noble imam. Imam al nawawi has a book called Riyadh al-Salihin. Many of us know it. We know this book. This kitab, Riyadh al-Salihin, Imam al nawawi chapters a chapter in his Riyadh al-Salihin. And he chaptered it by calling it Babu ma yubahu min al ghiba The chapter of that which is permissible from backbiting. Backbiting is permissible at times. Babu chapter ma yubahu min al ghiba when backbiting is permissible. And Imam al nawawi says, straight after when he brings the chapter in, in his Kitab Riyadh al-Salihin, he says, he says, I'lam know anna al-ghibata tubahu li gharadin sahihin shar'iyin la yumkinu al-wusul ilayhi illa biha wa huwa sittatu asbabin. He says, I'lam know anna al-ghibata that backbiting, tubahu it is permissible. لِغَرَضٍ صَحِيحٍ شَرْعِيٍ But it, if, if it's done with a correct Islamically legislated purpose. لَا يُمْكِنُ الْوُصُولُ إِلَيْهِ And that objective cannot be met except by doing this ghiba, this backbiting. إِلَّا بِهَا So a person, he has to backbite a person and the reason why is because لِغَرَضٍ صَحِيحٍ شَرْعِيٍ It is for the Sharia. It is for the a correct Islamic cause. There's no other way I can fulfill this purpose. Unless I backbite this person, the Shaykh Rahimahullah said it's permissible at this time. وَهُوَ سِتَّةُ أَسْبَابٍ And it is six times when it is غَرَض Sahihin, Shar'iyin. It is six times when it is Islamically legislated to backbite. So he mentions them all, but the one that concerns us is this one, which is the fourth one he mentions. It's the fourth one he mentions. He says, تَحْذِيرُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنَ الشَّرِّ وَنَصِيحَتُهُمْ To warn the Muslims from the e an evil. You warn the Muslims from an evil. وَنَصِيحَتُهُمْ And you advise the Muslims regarding an evil. So what you're doing is, you are warning the Muslims from an evil by advising them. وَذَلِكَ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ And this, the fourth one, it occurs in many different forms. It comes in different forms of how a person can advise the Muslims from an evil that's going to occur to them. He mentions some. From those he mentions is Jarhu al Majruhina min Ruwati. The criticism that are placed on the narrators. Washuhudi and also the witnesses. Wadalika ja izun al nar is permissible. Bi ijma'il Muslimina by the consents of the Muslims. بَلْ وَاجِبٌ لِلْحَاجَةِ Rather, it is obligatory when there is a need for it. A narrator in a hadith, it's allowed to be said about him is a liar if he is a liar. If he is 
A person who commits sins openly, he can be called a fasiq. These terms that are being used against him are harsh terms. Lying is backbiting. But it's permissible. Because it is to protect the Prophet's narrations. Wa shuhudi. And also a person, if he can be a witness, we can say Fulan can't be a witness. Or why can't he be a witness? He's a liar. Don't take him as a witness. So criticizing him and critique him is protecting the religion. Because the religion commands us to take two reliable individuals as a witness. They have to be reliable. So if a person criticizes his integrity, it's permissible because the religion is going to be protected. You see? And he goes, he says, This is permissible. By consent of the Muslims. There's no khilaf. Two individuals do not dispute this. But rather, if there is a need for it, it's obligatory. And from them is, the Dhamir goes back to, warning the Muslims from the evil and advising him. From them is, Ah, pay attention to this one. If you see a person who is studying fiqh, a student of fiqh, I mean a person who is trying to understand the religion here, a person who wants to de learn the deen, a student of knowledge, you see a student of knowledge, he's going back and forth to an innovator. Back and forth, he's going to an innovator. Or he's going back and forth to a fasiq. A fasiq is an individual who does, he does sins openly. He does sins openly. So you see a student of knowledge just going back and front to this person. And he's going to him to take knowledge from him. You fear, you're scared, you're concerned that this student of knowledge is going to be harmed by going to this individual. It is obligatory on you to advise him. By doing what? Bi bayani halihi to clarify the situation of this person who he goes to. By telling him, this individual that you keep going to, this individual is a mubtadi' or he's a fasiq. You have to clarify it to him. It's wajib. Then Imam al goes on to say, Bi sharti an yaqsid al nasiha. But with the condition that the person intends that this is an advice. Wahada mimma yughlatu fihi. And this is something that shaitan may come to your intention sometimes. You need to be very concerned of your heart as well. Even that though you're warning this person from that person, you should also remember that this is lillah, for the sake of Allah, intentions and sincerity. Naam. And then Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he brings narrations in his kitab Riyadh al-Salihin. He brings a hadith to prove this argument of his. And that his points that he brought He's trying, he brings evidences for it. One of the evidences he brings is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Anna rajulan ista'adhana ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house and he asked, for, uh, he asked permission if he can enter. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I'dhanu lahu, let him in. He said to Aisha, let him in. Bi'sa akhul ashira. Evil is the tribe that this man is from. Mutafakun alayhi, this hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith means these tribe are evil because this person is from them. This tribe is evil because this individual is from them. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the man who had the greatest noble character. وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are of high level of morals and conduct and character is warning and he is critiquing an individual to his wife Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها He is saying بِئْسَ أَخُ الْعَشِيرَةِ And Imam al-Nawawi is using this as an evidence that backbiting when it's permissible بَابُ مَا يُبَاحُ مِنَ الْغِيبَةِ That when you want to warn the people from an individual's evil and you want to advise them from it. Tahadiru al Muslimina. You're warning the Muslims. Mina sharri and evil. Wa nasihatuhum. And you're advising them from this. 
permissible. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ here is a clear evidence that the Prophet ﷺ criticized this man and critiqued him. His, his tribe is evil because of him being amongst them. And then Imam al-Nawawi straight after that in his Kitab Riyadh al-Salihin, he mentions that the following. He says, احْتَجَّ بِهِ الْبُخَارِيُّ فِي جَوَازِ غِيبَةِ أَهْلِ الْفَسَادِ وَأَهْلِ الْرِيبِ He says that this hadith of Aisha in Bukhari and Muslim, which the Prophet ﷺ said, بِئْسَ أَخُ الْعَشِيرَةِ Imam al-Bukhari used this and made it a proof, an argument for himself. في جواز غيبة أهل الفساد The permissibility of backbiting the people of corruption وأهل الريب and the people of whims and desires the innovators So Imam al-Bukhari Imam al-Bukhari رحمه الله also used the hadith of Aisha in the permissibility of doing this Another hadith Imam al-Nawawi brings the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith Sahih al-Bukhari, in hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, قالت, she said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا أَظُنُّ فُلَانًا وَفُلَانًا يَعْرِفَانِ مِنْ دِينِنَا شَيْئًا Aisha said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I do not think so, that so and so and so and so, both of them know anything from this religion of Islam. ما أظن I don't think فلان and so and so وفلان and also so and so يعرفان that they both know من ديننا شيء and anything from our religion meaning they're ignorant of this deen the prophet saying this عليه الصلاة والسلام الإمام الليث بن سعد who is من أحد الرواة الحديث one of the narrators who narrated the hadith the great noble imam imam الليث بن سعد he says about this hadith, he says, These two men are from the hypocrites. That the Prophet ﷺ is naming them Fulanan, Wafulanan, so and so, and so and so. He's naming them, he's saying their names. He said about them, Ma adunu yarifani and Mindini Nashia. They don't know nothing about our religion. So the Prophet is clarifying the situation of these two hypocrites. So the people are aware that they do not become deceived with them. Because these hypocrites are in the midst of the Muslims. They're sitting with them, they're eating with them, they are spending time with them. So they have to be warned from them. Our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it reached him that a man, Abu Sanabil, gave a verdict. Abu Sanabil, Gave the verdict that if a woman, her husband dies and she is pregnant and she gives birth, that she will have to count the idda of four months and ten days. Arba'ata ashhurin wa ashara. Four months and ten days. He gave that verdict. When in reality, the woman who's pregnant, her idda is when? Hatta yada'na hamlahunna. Until she gives birth, that's it. The idda is over. So when the Prophet heard that alayhi salatu wasalam, that incorrect verdict, he said, Kadaba Abu Sanabil. Abu Sanabil has lied. The Prophet critiqued him. And he said, Kadaba Abu Sanabil. Abu Sanabil has lied. Who is saying this? Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah He said commenting on this hadith Kadhab Abu Sanabil Ibn Taymiyyah said وَمَنْ تَكَلَّمَ فِي الدِّينِ Anyone who speaks about this religion or speaks in this religion بِلَا عِلْمٍ without knowledge كَانَ كَاذِبًا He's a liar وَإِنْ كَانَ لَا يَتَعَمَّدُ الْكَذِبِ Even if he does not intend the lying If a person speaks in this religion, anything regarding the religion of Allah, without any knowledge, he has no knowledge for it. He is a liar, even if he did not intend to lie. And he used the evidence of the hadith of Kadhab Abu Sanabil. I mean, and that companion wouldn't have, would not have done that. Even that though there is a dialect of the Arabs, 
which the word kadaba means when you do something wrong. And it doesn't necessarily mean to lie. Ala kulli hal, all of these evidences, Nawawi brought as an argument for himself and a proof to use that it is permissible to backbite when you are warning the Muslims from a evil thing out there or an innovator. It is permissible. My beloved brothers and sisters, Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his kitab al-Ruh, the last pages, and Ibn Abdul al-Bar in his kitab Jami' Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadri, they brought the hadith of Fatima bint Qais, both of them. And when they both brought it, they both mentioned for hadith of Fatima bint Qais, which is Sahih Muslim, that Fatima bint Qais came to the messenger and she said, Ya Rasulullah, two men have asked for my hand in marriage. One is Aba Jaham, Abu Jaham. The second one is Muawiyah ibn, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Muawiyah who wants to marry me. And Abu Jaham who wants to marry me. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, he said to Fatima bint Qais, Muawiyah fasu'luku la mala lahu. Su'luk means the person who is faqir, who has nothing. He has faqir, as Lisan al-Arab mentions. The second is Abu Jaham. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, Barrabul lil nisa. In another riwayah, he says, La yulqi al-asa an atiqi. He's a man who hits the women's, women excessively. He beats men, women. In another narration, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he doesn't take the stick off his shoulder. He's always hitting women. So the Prophet critiqued these two companions and warned Fatima bin Tiqais from them. He warned them from them. He warned her from these two individuals. And he gave her another alternative. He, he said, go marry um, Usama. My beloved brothers and sisters, I ask you this question. Fatima bint Qais's matter was a worldly issue. And the Prophet وسلم, gave her her rights in knowing what she's going to get herself into. How about if it's a matter pertaining to the religion. And this is what Ibn Qayyim says in his Kitab Al-Ruh and Ibn Abd al in his Kitab Jami' Bayan Al-Ilm Wa Fadli. They both say this. That the matter pertaining to the religion is far greater than a matter pertaining to the dunya. A woman comes up to you. She has the right as a sincere brother of hers to say, Sister, this brother is not for you. This is a worldly issue. This is a worldly issue. Then how is it that you see that same sister going to an innovator, learning from him? You're not sincere enough to tell her to save her religion and stop going to him. And that is what those two noble Imams, Ibn Abdul Bar and Ibn Al Qayyim, both pointed out. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to mention some of the statements of the scholars. I'm going to mention different types of scholars. Al-Imam Ibn Al Jawzi in his Kitab Al Mawdu'at. He says the following, and I'm going to read these kalam and these statements on you, inshallah ta'ala. For you to realize the issue of refuting innovators, and what is it in our religion, and what weight does it hold? Al Imam ibn al Jawzi, rahimahullah, in his Kitab al Mawdu'at, first page, uh, sorry, first volume, page 51, he says, Qala Abu al Wafa Ali ibn Aqil in al Faqih. Abu al Wafa. Ali ibn Aqil al-Faqih al-Hambali He said Qala shaykhuna Abu al-Fadl al-Hamdani So Ibn Aqil, Abu al-Wafa Ali ibn Aqil is saying My teacher said Abu al-Fadl al-Hamdani said Mubtadi'u al-Islam The innovators of Islam Pay attention The innovators of Islam and the ones who place the narrations in our religion, pay attention, the innovators in Islam, and the people who fabricate narrations, they make up narrations. Ashaddu min al they are worse than the disbelievers in the kuffar. This is the statement of Abu al-Fadl al-Hamdani, who is the Shaykh 
of the Sheikh of Ibn Jawzi. Mubtadi'u al-Islam wal wadhi'una lil-ahadith ashaddu minal mulhidin. Why? Li'anna al-mulhidin qasadu ifsad al-deen min al-kharij. Because the disbelievers, they intended to harm the religion from the outer. وَهَؤُلَاءِ But the innovators. قَصَدُوا إِفْسَادَهُمْ مِنَ الدَّاخِلِ They intended to harm the religion from within. فَهُمْ They are, the innovators are like كَأَهْلِ بَلَدٍ سَعُوا فِي إِفْسَادِ أَحْوَالِهِمْ They are like the situation of a people who want to corrupt their own land. A people who want to corrupt their own town and their own city and their own village. The innovators are like that. وَالْمُلْحِدُونَ كَالْحَاصِرِينَ مِنْ خَارِجِ And the kuffar and the disbelievers are like a people who are around the fortress. Who are not within the building or not within the city or the village. فَالدُّخَلَ The people who, the enemies who are within, which are the innovators. The enemies who are within, فَالدُّخَلَ The internal ones, the innovators who are inside. يَفْتَحُونَ الْحِسْنَ They will open the fortress. فَهُمْ شَرٌ فَهُمْ فَهُمْ شَرٌ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ غَيْرِ الْمُلَابِسِينَ They are more worse for Islam than those who are Muslims or those who come across as Muslims. The innovator, his harm is within. Whereas the disbeliever harms you from outside. This person, you, you've, you're shoulder to shoulder with him. You're next to him. And here he is. He causes harm within. So they're worse. That is the kalam of Shaykh Abu Al-Fadl Al-Hamdani, who is the teacher of Abu Al-Wafa' Ali ibn Aqil. Ibn Al-Jawzi brought that statement of his in his kitab, Al-Mawdu'at, first volume, page 51. Al-Hafid Taqiyuddin, Ahabi Muhammad, Abdul Ghani ibn Abdul Wahid Al-Maqdisi, the author of the kitab, Al-Umdat uh, Al-Ahkam. He has a book called Al-Iqtisad Fil Al-Itiqad, page 223. He says the following. He says, وَعْلَمْ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهِ أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ وَأَهْلَهُ أُوتُوا مِنْ طَوَائِفَ ثَلَاثَةَ He says, no, may Allah have mercy upon you. أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ ذَتْ إِسْلَامَ And it's people. اعلم نو رحمك الله may Allah have mercy on you. أن الإسلام ذات إسلام وأهله أن the people of Islam أوتوا من طوائف ثلاثة the harm came to them from three groups Islam and its people have been harmed from three people the harm has occurred to them from three types of people هيا so the enemies that are harming Islam and that are causing harm to Islam are three types of people. Fata'ifatun, the first one, is the group. Raddat ahadith al-sifati. They rejected the ahadith pertaining to the characteristics and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kadabu ruwataha. And they disbelieved in the narrators who have transmitted in it. They said they're liars. They're liars. The narrators who've transmitted these hadith. فَهَاُولَاءِ The first type of people. أَشَدُّ ضَرَرًا عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَأَهْلُهُ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ They are more harm to Islam and its people than the disbelievers. These people who've rejected the hadith pertaining to the characteristics of Allah, who have classified the narrators who've, had, who've transmitted these narration to us, as liars, they are more of a harm to us than the mulhideen and the kuffar. This is the kalam of Sheikh al taqiyuddin Abi Muhammad, Abdul Ghani ibn Abdul Wahid al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah. Wa ta'ifatun, the second group. The second group. Qalu bi sihatiha. They accepted these narrations. A hadith is sifat, they said, yeah, it's authentic. Ah, it's authentic. They didn't reject it like the first group. They said, yes, it's authentic. وَقَبُولِهَا And they accepted it. ثُمَّ تَأَوَّلُوهَا But then, then after, 
they distorted its meanings. They said it's authentic. But the word Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa means istawla, mathalan. Ya Iblisu ma mana'aka an tasjuda lima khalaqtu bi yaday. They said, a yaday means what? It means qudratay, ability, qudra. It means ni'ma. They've done ta'wil. Meaning, nafyu al-ma'na al-zahir. Negating the apparent meaning that is in these characteristics. And initiating a new meaning for it. But they've accepted the narration is sahih because it's in Bukhari, because it's in Muslim, because they've accepted it. But they distorted the meaning. فَهَاُولَاءِ These ones, أَعْظَمُ الضَّرَرًا They are more of a harm من الطائفة الأولى than the first group. Which one are the first group? The first group are the group that's worse than the kuffar. These are even worse than the group that are worse than the kuffar. والثالث of the third group. جَانَبُ الْقَوْلَيْنِ They went side of the two groups. They took another uh, path of the two groups. وَأَخَذُوا بِزَعْمِهِمْ And they claimed that they have taken the path of what? يُنَزِّهُونَ وَهُمْ يُكَذِّبُونَ That they are exalting Allah. But in reality, they are disbelieving. So really, the third group tried to make a third path, but what they fell into was that which the first group fell into and that which the second group fell into. And because of that, they became and because of that, they became worse than the two previous groups. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, here Abdul Ghani, Abdul Wahid al Maqdisi is telling us that are people who've rejected the characteristics and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who've classified those narrations to be weak. That they are more worse and that they are more of a harm for Islam and its people than the disbelievers. And then he mentions the second type of group of people. They've actually accepted those narrations. And they've classified it to be authentic and graded it to be authentic. But they distorted its meanings. They are even worse than the first group. Now, someone may ask himself and say, how is this possible? The reason is because the person who seems to be closest to you causes you muham. The one who seems to be accepting things, but his innovation is hiding it from you, this person becomes more of a harm for you than anything else. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 28th volume, page 231 to page 232. Ibn Taymiyyah says, أو العبادات المخالفة للكتاب والسنة فإن بيان حالهم وتحذير الأمة منهم واجب باتفاق المسلمين Ibn Taymiyyah says and the likes of the leaders of innovation those who have statements that are in opposition to the kitab and the sunnah or they have types of worship that are in opposition to the Kitab and the Sunnah. فَإِنَّ بَيَانَ حَالِهِمْ Clarifying these people's situation, sitting down to expose them and to clarify them. وَتَحْذِيرَ الْأُمَّةِ And warning the Ummah from them. وَاجِبٌ بِاتِّفَاقِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ It is obligatory by consent. It's wajib. So the hukum shar'i that it takes bayanu halil mubtadi'a wa tahdheeru al-ummati minhum clarifying the situation of the innovators and warning the Muslims from them is that it is wajib, it is obligatory leaving it, you're a sinner for leaving it. And this is a consent by the Muslims. We're going to come to it. Is it fardu ayn or fardu kifai? We're going to come to that inshaAllah ta'ala. Hatta qila li Ahmad ibn Hanbal 
until it was said to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Who is this? Imam Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is the Imam of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is Imam al Mubajjal, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He was, it was said to him, Arrajulu yasumu wa yusalli wa ya'takifu. Ahabu ilayk. A man, an individual. He fasts. He prays. He does i'tikaf. Pay attention. This person is fasting. This person is praying. Voluntary praise. Acts of worship he comes, he's coming with. وَيَعْتَكِفُ And he's doing i'tikaf in the masjid. أَحَبُّ إِلَيْكَ Is that person more beloved to you? أَوْ يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي أَهْلِ الْبِدَعَ Or he sits down and he refutes, exposes and speaks against the people of innovation. Who is, who is more beloved to you? My beloved brothers and sisters, listen to this. This is a question put to Imam Ahmed. An Imam who has memorized thousands of narrations. That the Ummah, Mashariq al Ardi wa Magharibiha, the East, the West, the North, the South, they've unanimously agreed upon on his nobility and his makana. The Muslims, they've unanimously agreed upon it. That he is from the A'immatul Matbu'in, that he's from one of the Imams that are followed. Rahimahullah, Rahmatul Wasi'ah, may Allah have um, on him great mercy. He was asked about a man. Who fasts, he prays, he does i'tikaf in the masjid. Do you love that person or an individual who speaks about the innovators, exposes the innovators, critiques the innovators, spends his life doing that? Who's more beloved to you? Faqala Ahmed responded by saying, Ida qama wa salla wa ataka. If he stands up and he prays and he does i'tikaf, فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ لِنَفْسِهِ He's doing all of that for himself. وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمَ فِي أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ But if he speaks about the innovators, فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ This is an act which he is doing for the Muslims. هَذَا أَفْضَلُ This is better. لا شك. لا شك that's better. Because the fi'il which is qasir, the act of obedience which is exclusive to you, is not as good as the fi'il, the ta'a, which is muta'addi, that involves others. The scholars, they say, for you to do an act of good for yourself, and for you to involve others in the act of good, it is better that you do the good for others. Because the ta'a, which is muta'addi, the obedience, which it transmits and it goes to others, is greater than the act that is specific to you. That's Imam Ahmed. Ibn Taymiyyah is going to be benefit from us, from what Imam Ahmed said. He said, فَبَيَّنَا He said, Ibn, Imam Ahmed clarified to us. أَنَّ نَفْعَ هَذَا عَامٌ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ That... The benefit of this, which is to speak about innovators, is a benefit that involves others. It brings other people in. You see? In what? Like in? Feeding him in their religion. Speaking about the innovator is a benefit that is general for the Muslims and it protects their religion. It's better. And then Shaykh Islam Taymi goes on to say, and that it is from min jinsil jihad fi sabilillah. Speaking about the innovators, critiquing them, criticizing them, um, exposing them, is from the jihad of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's cause. Is his jihad fighting fi sabilillah in the cause of Allah? Is tathiru sabilillah because purifying the path of Allah? Wadinihi and his religion. Wa min hajihi and his methodology, his path. Wa shir'atihi and his legislation. Wa daf'u baghiha ulai wa udwanihim. And also repelling the oppression of these innovators, how they've exceeded their limits. 
and the enmity and the evil. Wajibul al kifaya. It is an obligatory on some of the Muslims who have to stand for for it. It's fardu kifai. Bittifaq al Muslimina. This is a unanimously agreed upon. There's no khilaf. That speaking about these innovators by repelling the evil. You see, and purifying them from this part, uh, from uh, 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 sorry, by purifying the path of Allah from the taint and the filth that they have thrown at it, and purifying the religion of Allah and His religion and His legislation, and repelling their oppression and their wrongdoings and their crimes, is wajibun ala al kifayati bi tifaq al muslimin. Ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say, "Walau la, and if it wasn't." Man yuqimuhu Allah, if it was not for those who Allah has made them stand for doing this. Purifying the path of Allah, repelling these people's evil and their wrongdoings. If it wasn't for them, لِدَفْعِ ضَرَرِ هَؤُلَاءِ By repelling the evil of these people, لَفَسَدَ الدِّينُ This religion would have been corrupt. My beloved brothers and sisters, if these people who are defending the religion, who are defending the religion and repelling the evil of these individuals. If it wasn't them, they, if they weren't doing that, لفسد الدين, this religion would have been corrupt. وَكَانَ فَسَادُهُ And the corruption that comes from it, it would be greater, أعظم من فساد استيلاء العدو من أهل الحرب. It would be greater from an enemy coming into the lands of the Muslims. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Kalamu. The corruption that these innovators are going to cause if there's no one standing up to defend the religion from their filth and their evil, what will happen? The enemies that come into the Muslim lands, the harm that they can cause is nothing in comparison to the harm that these innovators and these corrupted people will cause. So Ibn Taymiyyah is not going to give us why. Why is the istila il adu min ahli al harb lesser in harm than the facade that these individuals can cause to our religion? He's going to explain to us. He says, because the reason is because because these people, when the this the ahlul harb, the enemies of Islam, the kuffar, when they come into the lands of the Muslims, you see. لم يفسد القلوب they are not going to harm that hearts وما فيها من الديري and the religion that's still in the hearts of the people the people know that this is a kafir they'll stay away from him they know he's an enemy they will take consider him as an enemy so he won't be able to get to their hearts but if he does cause harm to their religion it's going to be إلا تبعا it's after a period of time it's not straight away it's not directly he's first of all going to take the land over and then after that he's going to get to it Whereas the innovators, وَأَمَّا أُولَٰئِكَ As for the innovators, for whom يُفْسِدُونَ الْقُلُوبَ ابْتِدَاءً They're straight away going to go to the hearts of the people. Because the people don't know. They can't tell the difference between them and you. So they're going to come to the masjid. They're going to preach their corruption and their evil. The people are silent about it. So they're going to harm the heart straight away. This is the kalam of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And wallahi my beloved brothers and sisters. لَوْلَ الْحُفَّاظِ الْأَكَابِرِ if it was not from the noble scholars of hadith, if it wasn't for them and their defending of this religion, the disbelievers, the hypocrites, will come and they will do khutbah for us on the pulpit. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is the kalam of Imam Dhabi bin Nisir Alam bin Ubala, and he also attributed that statement of his to also Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. That being the case, Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, look at the Christians and the Jews. Look at the Christians, look at the Gospels. Huh? Is it called, called uh? Gospels? Huh? Look how they sing, they, they chant. Is that their religion? But because their religion got changed, they turned their whole religion to music. Bit by bit, they changed their religion. No one was stopping them. It was just going on. And the religion got tainted and it got... So our job, my beloved brothers and sisters, we defend our religion. 
and we protect its boundaries and we don't let anybody come into it that is protected. Al Imam Mushatibi rahimahullah he said a statement that's powerful in his kitab Al I'tisam. He said in the second volume, page 208, these are all the statements of the scholars. And I want you to see because some may think this is a, a minority of scholars who've said this. Even though I brought the statement of all these scholars I brought, Kan Nawawi rahimahullah, Ibn al Jawzi, who is bringing the kalam of, Ibn Aqil, his teacher. Uh, and also the statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and his doings and how the Prophet wasalam, and Imam al-Nawawi in his Kitab al-Riyadh al-Salihin a book that if you go to anyone's house today majority of the Muslims have it in their households a book that has been given qabul and acceptance many of people don't know and Imam al-Shatib in his Kitab al-Itisam the second volume page 280 says حيث تكون, الف... uh, حيث تكون الفرقة تدعو إلى ضلالتها وتزيرها في قلوب العوام ومن لا علم عنده الإمام الشاطبي said when a group is calling to its misguidance a group stands up and it calls to misguidance and deviation and it starts to beautify it وتزيرها في قلوب العوام it starts to beautify this misguidance to the heart of the general mass وَمَنْ لَا عِلْمَ عِنْدَهُ And those who have no knowledge, they start to beautify into them. فَإِنَّ ضَرَرَ هَؤُلَاءِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَضَرَرِ إِبْلِيسِ These people's harm is like the harms, I mean these people's harm to the Muslims is like the harm of Iblis. وَهُمْ مِنْ شَيَاطِينِ الْإِنسِ And they are from the shaytan of the humans. Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He told us in the Quran, وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَا يُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ أَمَا الشَّيَاطِينُ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخْرُ فَالْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا There are shayateen al-ins. Humans who are shayateen. So they are min shayateen al-ins. And their harm is like the harm of Iblis. Because why? They are calling to misguidance and deviation and they're beautifying to the hearts of the general mass. And those who have no knowledge. So they are harmful, just like Iblis is harmful, and they are from the shayateen and the armies of Iblis. And then he goes on to say, فَلَا بُدَّ It is necessary, rather it is obligatory. مِنَ التَّصْرِيحِ بِأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بِدَعَ That we clearly, فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ التَّصْرِيحِ It is wajib that we clearly say بِأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعَةِ That they are from the innovators. No beating behind the bushes. We say, فُلَان مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعَةِ والضلالة, and he's from the people of misguidance. ونسبتهم إلى الفرق and that we attribute them to the deviated sects that they're from. If he's from this group, we say he's from this group. If he's from this group, we don't be behind the bushes. Ah, oh. لكن وين لكن إذا قامت له شهود على أنه منهم. After you have witnesses, you have pure clear-cut evidences that he's from them. Ah, oh. you don't want to take a person of the Sunnah out of the Sunnah unjustly. You have to have witnesses, proof for it. Then he goes on to saying, he goes on to saying, فَمِثْلُ هَؤُلَاءِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ ذِكْرِهِمْ Those type of people, it is obligatory to name them. You have to say their name. وَالتَّشْرِيدِ بِهِمْ And you have to disperse the people from, the, from them. When the people start gathering onto them and start listening, you tell the people, get away, get away, move, 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 don't say with them. Tashrid means what? The people you... Take him away from the, his gathering. Ah. فَمِثْلُ هَؤُلَاءِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ ذِكْرِيمِ We have to mention them by name. Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu mention the name of the companion? Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say كَذَبَ أَبُوْ سَنَابِلْ أَبُوْ سَنَابِلْ لَيْدْ Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say مَا أَظُنُّ فُلَانًا وَفُلَانًا يَعْرِفَانِ مِنْ دِينِنَا شَيْئًا I don't think so and so know anything of our religion. Did he not name them? Alayhi salatu wasalam. Did he not name Abu Sanabil? He named them, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then he said, فَمِثْلُ هَؤُلَاءِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ ذِكْرِهِمْ It is obligatory to name them. وَالتَّشْرِيدِ بِهِمْ And that you kick the people away from him. Ah. لِأَنَّ مَا يَعُودُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ ضَرَرِهِمْ إِذَا تُرِكُوا Because the harm that comes to the Muslims, if they are left, if they're left alone, and then if everyone's like, shh, don't talk, leave them alone, why are you refuting them for? If we leave them alone, the harm that comes to the Muslims is greater. 
أعظم من الضرر للحاصل بذكرهم which is greater than the harm that will come if we name them pay attention here now naming them is going to have a harm it's going to have a harm the reason it's going to have a harm is because the people's hearts are probably going to turn away from you the people are not going to want to listen to you because they are attached to him or he himself might get angry with you and stop talking to you and he might have hate and enmity to, to you and so disunity and division occurs and that no doubt in Islam is a harm it is a harm in Islam but that harm that comes from naming him is less than the harm of naming him to save the religion saving the religion sorry the, uh, the harm of us being silent about him and letting him do what he wants is greater than naming him and the qaida my beloved brothers al imam shatimi brings in his kitab is what ida ta'arab al-dharari if two harms are both opposed so we have two harms here the harm of naming him and the harm of being silent about him they're both harms they're both going against each other how do we resolve them yurtakabu akhafuhuma wa ashaluhuma and imam shatimi says what we take the lesser of those two and you have to now then take some of the evil then take all evil and then he gives an example of what cutting the hand of a person who has cancer cutting this hand is a harm but letting the cancer spread to the body is a greater harm because he's going to die. So here, we expose him by naming him. Huh? By naming him because the maslaha, the benefit that is in it, is greater. Last but not least, my beloved brothers and sisters, I have lengthened this little reminder for you all, is that some people think that this is just an act of a group of minority who do this and this is something that you won't find this even though I gave an extensive examples and as my sheikh used to always say our job is not to convince our job is just to convey so if what I said has convinced you then that's good if it hasn't then my job isn't to convince you my job is to tell you what I believe and the evidences that I provide you with but all of you know from the most authentic books after the Quran is Bukhari and Muslim. The Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, and Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, his kitab is the most authentic book after the book of Allah. And the book that comes after it as Imam al-Muslim, as the poet said, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ لا. وأن, uh, The first person, أَوَّلُ جَامِعِ الْحَدِيثِ والأثر, The first person who compiled an authentic book is Imam al-Muslim. Imam uh, al-Bukhari rahimahullah and that scholars differed uh, whether he's more authentic or Imam al-Muslim Naam. Abu Ali al-Naysaburi rahimahullah he took the opinion that Imam al-Muslim's book is more authentic than the book of Imam al-Bukhari and some of the Maghari but they took the opinion that Muslim is more authentic than Bukhari ala kulli hal Muslim's kitab is the most one of the most authentic books after Imam al-Bukhari's kitab, al rajih Open Sahih Muslim, the Muqaddimah, the introduction. Look at it, read it. What do you find in it? You find, you see with your own eyes, al Imam Muslim bringing narrations where people have been criticized. The book is full of it. Just one example is what I'm going to give you. Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, from his own senate, his own chain, to Ibn Aoun. He brings a senate, Saqa Sanaduhu min, Minhu ila, Aun, ila Ibn Aoun. He brings it to Ibn Aoun that Ibn Aoun said, Qala Ibrahim al Nakhai, Ibrahim al Nakhai said, Iyakum wal Mughira tabn Sa'idin. Be cautious and stay away and protect yourself from Mughira tabn Sa'idin. Wa Aba Abdir Rahim and also Aba Abdir Rahim. Fa innahu ma kathabani because both of them are liars. Both of them are liars. Stay away from them. Be cautious. For verily, both of them are liars. This is Ibrahim al-Nakhai. 
the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Ibn Aoun says that I heard Imam Ibrahim al nakhai said. So you know that this is something, the book you have goes to Sahih Muslim yourself. Look at the Muqaddim of Sahih Muslim. This is just one. Wallahi, you're going to find tons of them. Look at it and inshallah ta'ala you'll see it for yourself. So my beloved brothers and sisters, the khulasa is الردu ala al-mukhalif wal-naqdu ala ahli al-bid'a refuting the people of innovation and exposing them and clarifying their situation is how our religion was protected. The person who is refuting the innovator has to have ahliyyah, has to be the right person for it. If the person doesn't possess knowledge and doesn't have understanding of the religion of Allah, then he shouldn't go forward in doing this. The one who doesn't possess knowledge, who has no understanding of the deen of Allah, should not be speaking about these issues. And the second one is, the person who finds in him himself, الهوى, he follows his own whims and desires. Then the only reason why he critiques this person is because of hawa, desires. Then he should withhold his evil and stay away from this. Because the person who is doing it has to do with ikhlas and adil, justice, fairness. لذلك ابن تيمية says أهل السنة the people of the Sunnah are the ones that are most knowledgeable of the religion of Allah and they are the most merciful to the creation. أهل السنة are known for mercy and rahma. That the person who you're refuting and that you're exposing you're also asking Allah to guide them. Because your goal and your want is that Allah brings the people back to the haqq. This is more beloved to you than anything else. You wouldn't like anybody for Allah to punish them subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything which I have said, my beloved brothers and sisters, that was wrong and incorrect. فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْهُ It is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. أَشَّدُّ أَلَّا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ